Hello everyone, today we're going to be having a look at Death Stranding on the iPhone 15 Pro. Not the Max, just the Pro. I want to say a big thank you to the developer for providing me with early access to this game. Thank you so much. I also have an iPad version of this video out if you want to have a look at that right now. It should be somewhere around here. Anyway, uh, enjoy the video. Before we get into this, it's worth having a look at the supported devices for Death Stranding. Now let's go over the iOS tech of Death Stranding. As we all know, the game runs on Metal 3. In fact, it's one of the first DirectX 12 games ported to iPhone and iPad with Metal 3, along with Resident Evil 4. It's highly likely that Kojima used the game porting toolkit to help with this transition to Metal. Apple briefly demoed Death Stranding as an example of bringing a high-end Mac game to iPhone 15 Pro using this tech in a recent developer tech talk video. I can't confirm this, it's just my prediction. I don't know if it's worth going over, but the game was also using Xcode 15. Death Stranding also utilizes metal effects on iPhone 15 Pro and iPad and Mac. I believe it is using temporal anti-aliasing upscaling, and it probably uses performance mode. I don't really like metal effects in this game, at least on iPhone 15 Pro and iPad. My biggest issues were with flickering power lines and other objects in the scene. It was really noticeable and distracting. Also, major ghosting with character hair, especially in cutscenes. Now let's go over the resolution, graphics, and FPS on iPhone 15 Pro. It targets a resolution of 1561 by 720. The frame rate is also 30 FPS. Unlike the Mac version, there are no graphic settings on iPhone 15 Pro or iPad. I believe it has these locked default settings on iPhone 15 Pro. I compared the iPhone 15 Pro version to my M1 13 inch MacBook Pro by tuning the visuals until they look identical. It's pretty clear it's running at low graphics quality here on iPhone 15 Pro. Having depth of field enabled on iPhone 15 Pro does in some ways hide the lower quality. For another graphics comparison, this is what high settings at 4K on my 16 inch MacBook Pro with M2 Max looks like against the phone. Death Stranding is the largest mobile game ever in terms of file size. The full file size is about 54 gigabyte on iPhone and iPad compared to 77 gigabyte on Mac. Size may vary on your device though. It does vary like a few megabytes on my devices, but this is just the average. What's annoying though is that you can't install the game in the background or when your phone is turned off. It will only install when the app is open on your device. Apple needs to include a way to download games in the background as your phone is going to become really, really hot because it's going to be on for ages and then I had to plug in my charger as well because it was losing battery and then it gets even hotter. Death Stranding is a universal app between iPhone, iPad and Mac. And also it has iCloud Drive support between all devices. So you jump on an iPhone, you finish playing, you then jump on an iPad, you're going to be in the same spot basically. You jump onto a Mac, you're still in the same spot. Now let's go over the control options. First, touch controls. The game uses an on-screen virtual controller, same as RE4 and RE Village. It's terrible. You can change the default size, button icons. You can adjust the button layout and size, which is somewhat useful. You can change button transparency and so on and so forth. Traditionally, this game is best played on a controller because it's all about holding and timing and trying to quickly press LT or RT while moving with another hand is, is not fun. And then you're trying to breathe as well. 
Compared to playing an iPad, the smaller display here does make it a, a little bit easier to press multiple buttons at once, but it's still really awkward. But maybe, maybe some of you can get used to it and, and master it and so forth, but it's just not for me. The virtual controller gets in the way of menu interaction as well, and all the buttons are just overwhelming and just look bad. Obviously, they want us to play with the controller. So thankfully, it has full controller support with haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. Woo! Adaptive triggers and haptic feedback. I've been asking for this for so long. All of these big games coming to mobile just don't have this feature, and now we've got it, and I'm so excited. Anyway, uh, the controller UI will also change depending on what controller you're using. For example, here I am using an Xbox Elite Controller Series 2, and now I've switched over to a PS5 DualSense controller, and it just switches straight away. You don't have to restart the app or disconnect your controller, and I think that's really good to see. The game is also absolutely wonderful to play with a Backbone 1 controller, but note, I don't think this controller has rumble or haptics or adaptive triggers. And that is sad because I really like that stuff. <laughs> it's also kind of cool that there is now a Death Stranding Backbone 1 controller. I don't have one of those sadly because it's only available in the US. Here's an image. Some of you might consider playing the game on an external display for a more console experience. I don't like doing this. Mind you, as the game is playing at such a low resolution, basically 720p, and Metal Effects is making it even worse. And then it's being blown up as well on, on, a, on a larger display. It looks really bad. It looks so bad. It's also only mirroring your iPhone display, so there will be black bars at the top and bottom of your display. The game is also supposed to have mouse and keyboard support on iPhone. But for some reason, I could only get my keyboard to work. My mouse did not work. Alrighty, what you've all been waiting for. Now let's go over the performance of Death Stranding on iPhone 15 Pro. Before we get into this, it's worth noting 505 Games have provided me with a test flight build of Death Stranding Director's Cut on the App Store which allows me to utilize the Metal Performance HUD. I'm also recording this footage with an external capture card. As I said earlier, the game is running at a really low resolution, 1561 by 720, with Metal FX enabled in the background, a 30 FPS cap, and locked custom graphics. It's worth noting, I tested only about three hours into the game, and I apologize for that, but I believe much of the gameplay is similar here, involving cutscenes and then more cutscenes and then exploring the world and exploring the world some more and then encounters with beach things or gas bags or BTs and then having sexy showers. Obviously there is much more on offer, but these are the type of sequences that I, I want to show in my video. For once, it would seem that Dooms and BBs are a good combination. <laughs> or perhaps the two of you have something of an affinity for one another. One of the biggest parts of Death Stranding are its incredibly detailed and graphically impressive cutscenes. Many cutscenes were able to achieve the 30 FPS target. This impressed me, as some of these cutscenes can last for, for a very, very long time. So achieving a stable frame rate is honestly, in my opinion, really impressive. That being said, there are equally a number of cutscenes where the FPS will struggle. The cutscenes are a vital part of this game, and when it drops, it's just not nice. The game also crashed three times during an early cutscene with Die Hardman 
in my private room? It's most likely that the game runs out of available memory and then, you know, just it crashes. Listen up, Sam. The terminals Amelie's people built in the towns and cities they pass through on their journey west are called knots. Next, what about exploring the open world here? It can hit the 30 FPS target for sometimes long periods of time, but then suddenly you'll be heading back to Capital Knot City and it can drop below, well below 30 FPS. A locked 30 FPS, in my opinion, is a must for traveling around here because you always need to take care of your movement and, and timing with with buttons and when the FPS randomly tanks and sometimes big, big time, it's awkward because you're trying to carefully climb down a hill. Suddenly you're falling over because the frame rates drop so much. Also, I just suck. I only had a few encounters with beach things or gas bags or BTs or whatever in my playtime and I definitely, I definitely let them catch me on purpose, okay? It's not because I suck. Anyway, when in their presence, the FBS could often go into the low 20s, especially if I was grabbed and then the scene became dark and this dolphin was chasing me and the tire appeared and I got really scared. During sexy shower time, thankfully the FPS is for the most part a locked 30, but it can drop a little to 28 FPS, but it's not a big issue. I wouldn't want anything worse as I need a good FPS to appreciate Norman Reedus's rocking hot body. When playing, my iPhone 15 Pro can reach a bit above 50 degrees. It's definitely quite hot to hold, but I wouldn't say it's dangerously hot. I also did a one hour, 20 minute battery test starting at the beginning of the game until the first encounter with the gas bags. The battery went from 95% to 42%. So yeah, the game will absolutely chew through your battery here. So there we have Death Stranding on the iPhone 15 Pro. What do you guys think? I know we're going to have some mixed opinions in the comments. Obviously, it runs at like 720p low graphics, and a lot of people are going to give it some slack for that. But at the end of the day, it's running on a freaking phone. <laughs> like, how often do we get a massive AAA game like this running on the phone? Do I suggest that you play it? not really <laughs> if you want to play the game on this and have a good time a good experience you're not going to get that right now i would suggest if you want to get this game on iphone 15 pro i would only suggest looking into it if you're interested in the tech behind it or interested in helping with bringing triple a games to to iphone 15 pro or mobile in general it's definitely a much better experience on the ipad or behind me on on a, on a Mac. I would choose to play it on those platforms if you want to have a consistent and fun experience in, in terms of performance and quality. It's a really good showcase of what the future is going to be for, for gaming on, a, on an iPhone and that makes me really excited and I'm interested to see after you know Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil Village coming to 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 iPhone and app and iPad and, and Mac, if there are going to be more big developers and companies bringing over their games to this platform, 
I just want to say a big thank you to 505 Games for sending me early access to the game. I got really excited when I saw that uh, email. So thank you so, so much. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching and be sure to check out the iPad version of this video if you haven't already. Should be somewhere. <laughs>